So guys, I want to bring you my overall thoughts on the Bloody Harvest event. Nothing held back, a very honest opinion, and if any of you guys know me from my destiny days, I fully say how it is. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. Leaving a thumbs up truly helps me out and if you enjoy your stay here, be sure to subscribe. So let's get straight into it. The Bloody Harvest event is a free DLC which ends on December 5th, which initially dropped on October 24th, so a little over 5 weeks in total. It consists of a new NPC in Morris, a new area in Heck, and a new boss to BR3 in Captain Haunt. Four new legendaries exclusive to the event which are the Gaskull Grenade, the Scream and Terror Shield, the Fearmonger Shotgun and the Stalker Sniper Rifle. So firstly, the exclusive gear. What does this actually say about this DLC? Well, upon first usage of the sniper and shotgun, I will state I was kinda a little underwhelmed. Just for the simple fact I'm so used to using shotguns like the Protuberance, snipers like the Lyuda, and a few other hard hitting beasts. These two weapons just don't feel quite on par DPS wise. But upon further thought and well experimentation, I actually don't feel these two weapons were made for DPS so to speak. The shotgun shoots for projectiles that stick, they explode and do additional damage. These, if used right, with the perfect setup, absolutely shred enemies. I feel that's what this is for. With the multiple variants it drops with also, there is no doubt in my mind that's this shotgun's purpose. The sniper, the stalker, I have already reviewed. And although initially people tried to compare it to the Lauda, it's actually a much more of a one trick pony. But within the right build, it indeed could be a great addition. Their cryo damage and efficiency, how sharp and accurate it is, the two different sights also in my opinion make this for the perfect cryo build weapon. Me being a Zane main, I see all the benefits this weapon can have. My only issue with it is the ammo reserves. For a fast firing low impact precision sniper, it does need more backup ammo. Again, builds and different anointments can help here though. The shield being the Scream and Terror, also looking at it, I can see a purpose for it. But it is again for one of those one off purpose builds. The Gas Cool Grenade, well, this is where things heat up, people. This grenade, in my opinion, has taken the crown had by the Hex for being the best grenade in the game. Ever since first using it and reviewing it for you guys, it has been my go to grenade for every build. Perfect for bosses, perfect for farming mobs of enemies, just about everything. The one you want to look out for is the Vindicator Gas Call, I believe it's called. This combines both benefits of the cloning and roided. The cloning splits into two grenades upon throwing it, and the roided, I believe, deals 20% additional damage. But yeah, the exclusive loot for this event is definitely good enough, in my opinion. The Bloody Harvest is also home to a new method in which builds can be made with the new terrified Vault Hunter buff. This initially upon first experience isn't what you'd call a buff, but with the right weapons and gear equipped it soon becomes one, as the Bloody Harvest event brings a whole host of new anointed gear which take advantage of this terror effect. We also get new cosmetics obtained via doing various challenges in game as well. Now although to an outsider watching this not really understanding the type of game Borderlands is for the majority, they'd think well this isn't all of that much. But to the true Borderlands fans who understand what this game is all about, there's actually quite a lot on offer here. As when you understand that Borderlands is about farming that perfect gear, the amount of changes this terror effect can have on builds is actually pretty crazy. And then when you think all previous gear within BR3, not just exclusive Bloody Harvest loot, can also drop with terror anointed stats, it means there's so much we can go back and farm thanks to this event which offer new anointed pieces. Things such as this tsunami which I got yesterday which I'm super happy with. But there are endless items you could go back and farm which could really open doors to new builds. And because although when this event ends you can still apply the terror effect to yourself via terrified anointed gear which offer this stat, it doesn't mean all these terror anointed items will eventually become useless which I know many people feared. So with all of that in mind, this DLC has plenty to offer for the typical Borderlands player who enjoys the grind. And my honest opinion of it is I actually think it's amazing and the fact it's 100% free of charge, how can you in reality be upset about it? Now there are a few things I do find a little frustrating, which I hope they do, if future DLCs consist of the same core mechanics, find a way to incorporate them better than what they are now. 
For instance, terrified anointed items. Yes, these drop for this event only, but man, it's all that seemingly dropping for me. I actually wouldn't mind getting a fear monger anointed, but not terror anointed. Most of the ones I have got indeed require that terror effect. Now I know they have confirmed that sometime soon we will see reduced terror anointed gear and we'll start seeing standard variants again. So this isn't too bad. It means for the majority of this event, this will be fine. Another thing which I feel is probably the worst part about this DLC is the fact of not being able to farm Captain Haunt like us Borderlands fans enjoy. We want to stay here all day farming his loot pool for those beauties. But instead, we have to get 25 Hectoplasms from other means before we can get back here and fight him again. Now the way they should have done it is as follows. At the start of this event, there should have been a quest to unlock the Captain Haunt fight or Heko, which required, let's say, 250 hectoplasms, so equivalent to 10 runs of the bus. And after we collected these 250 hectoplasms, we gained unlimited access to Heko to farm Captain Haunt as we please. The point of actually getting hectoplasms as it stands is more of a nuisance, which isn't doing anything but breaking our rhythm. And to be honest, it isn't hard to get them. It's just that constant loop of farming with the element of RNG in terms of what drops is what we find addictive. This addiction and the fun and the rhythm it offers with every haunt kill is broken because we have to go back and collect 25 more hectoplasms. So hopefully if they think of doing anything like this for a future event, hopefully they take this into account. But honestly, other than that, there really isn't anything I can sit here and actually complain about because it was a free event. We didn't have to part with anything. And to tell you exactly how much I've enjoyed it guys, it's kept me away from playing Destiny 2 and that's saying something. So yeah, these are my thoughts on the Bloody Harvest event. If this is the base for future DLC events, I am more than happy going forward. But on that note, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out. If you want to tell me your thoughts on the Bloody Harvest DLC, Tell me them down below in that comment section. I look forward to reading what you think. But guys, I hope you do enjoy the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.